Hey everyone, I'm Dean and in this video today I want to show you all the settings and everything you need to know about resizing your images. Now make sure you hang around till the end because I want to show you Photoshop's new AI interpolation method of upsizing your images. If you want to blow something massively large then it does an incredible job on doing that. So hang around to the end. Let's jump into Photoshop and I'll show you how. Okay, so I have my image open and I'm working in Adobe Photoshop CC 2019. Now, there's a few different ways of resizing images within Photoshop. Um, we can do it within the crop tool, we can do it when we export, but really the ultimate way and the best way to keep you know, the, the most control is to do it via image size. So if we come up to our top toolbar, go to image, and then come down to image size and it brings up this palette here and this is the one where we can change all of our dimensions to resize the image. Now before we start resizing let me just run through this box and show you what everything is and what it all means. Let's start from the top and work our way down. So the first one here is image size so that's the current size of the image. So this one at the moment is 120 megabytes that's fairly large but it is a 16-bit file so that's why it's quite big. Over on the right here we've got a cog wheel. You don't really need to worry about that. It's only one option and it'll come default. It should be ticked that scale styles. What this does is if you have a layer that has a style on it, say a drop shadow, then when this is ticked it'll scale the drop shadow as well as the image. Okay, next down we have dimensions. So here we're displaying our dimension in pixels. We can change that if we want. So we just click on the down arrow and we can change it to a percentage, inches, centimeters, millimeters, whatever we want. I normally just leave that one at pixels. I don't change it. Okay, next one down is fit to. And here we can make it fit to a certain size. Sort of a quick, easy one. If you wanted to throw it onto an A4, you could select this one here or you can make a custom size to suit. Okay, next down we have our width and our height. So here we are displayed in inches, we can change that. So this is the size of our document. If we wanted to change that to pixels, or centimeters, millimeters, whatever we want to work in. We also have a lock chain here. So when that is locked and these bars here are showing, then our image is constrained so it'll it'll stay to those proportions if you wanted to stretch it then you would unlink it and then you can change the the width or the height without changing the other one so normally for resizing images we would always have that selected is so as that we're not stretching our image we are resizing it proportionally okay next down we have our resolution so here we have two options pixels per inch or pixels per centimeter. Generally stay with pixels per inch, that's what everybody works in. And normally I'm at 300 for printing or editing, and then you can change that down to 72 if it's going on the web. Okay, next up we have resample. This is ticked, and when that is ticked it means that you're going to actually resample the image, as in you will be making it bigger or smaller. If that is unchecked, then what happens is our pixel dimension cannot change. Okay, so you can't make the, the image physically bigger or smaller. All you're really changing is the pixels per inch. So you're just changing the way the pixels lay within the image, how many per inch there are. Because you can see when I change that, it changes the, the physical size of it but not the resolution. That will just take that back to 300. So if you want to resize an image, you need to make sure that that is ticked and that'll allow it to go up or down in size. Now over here, this is the interpolation method. So this one's really important. We have different options here. There's an automatic. And then these three here are for upsizing images. 
by cubic sharper is for downsizing and then these three do both. We will generally be using this one for downsizing and I'll show you these ones when we upsize an image. I'll just put that on by cubic for the time being. Okay, and then over on the left here we have a preview window. So this previews our image at the current size. And you can see as I've put the mouse in here, we can go up to whatever percentage we want. Normally just stick with 100%, that's a good size. Now you can drag within that window to preview, or you can come to your image. When you come to your image, see we now have a square box, and we can come down to wherever we want, click, and that will take you quickly to that area to preview. And of course we have an OK, so when we want to commit, we will hit OK, and we can cancel. Now the cancel button you can actually change to a reset, not a lot of people know about this. So if you're mucking around with all these settings and you, you want to get back to where you started from, then you don't have to cancel out of this and reopen the box. You can just hold down the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC and that will change that to reset. So that's a handy one to know. Righto, so that's our image size box. Let me show you first up how to downsize an image and then I'll go through how to upsize an image. Righto, so let's say this image I want to put on my website, I only need it at 500 pixels wide. So at the moment it's 5,616 pixels wide, which is way too big. So there's a few things we need to check and tick on this box. Firstly, just make sure that this constraint box is highlighted and ticked so that we will maintain proportions. We won't stretch the image. We need to change the resolution to 72 pixels per inch. We need to make sure that we have resample ticked so we are changing the size of the image. And the interpolation method we want for downsizing is this one here, sharper. Okay, so then I just come back to the image size. I'm on pixels and I'll just make that 500 and you can see it's changed the height automatically for me. Click OK and there you go, we now have our downsized image ready for the web. Rightio, that's downsizing an image nice and easy. So let me go back in my history, I'll just reopen that image back to its full size and I will show you how to upsize an image now. So we just open that image size box again. Now there is a shortcut if you're on a Mac. It's Command Option I, I for image. And if you're on a PC, that's Control Alt I. Rightio, so we do the same thing for upsizing an image. We need to make sure that constraint proportions is ticked and that we are on resample. Let's say I want to print this one and I want to print it at um, 30 inches wide. So we just come over here, let's change this to inches. So at the moment it's 18 inches high. Okay, we're at um, 300 pixels per inch, which is what I want for printing. Now, for this first one, I'm just going to show you by Cubic Smoother. So this is what we used to always use before Photoshop CC has now introduced this artificial intelligence option of Preserve Details 2.0. I'll just select this one for this example and I'm going to show you a really big upsize with the other one. So now we need to change the width, so we want to go to 30 inches. Okay, so it's going to be 30 inches wide by 20 inches high and you can see up here our image size has changed, so we've jumped from 120 megabytes up to 309 megabytes. It's also giving us a pixel output, so it's now 9,000 pixels wide by 6,000. So originally we were 5,400, I think, so it's nearly doubled the size of the pixels. So what you need to understand here is that when we go up in size, it is basically making these pixels up. It has to invent them and um, reproduce them. And when we go down in size, it's throwing pixels away. So this is where your interpolation method gets very important because 
there's different ways it can do it and that's why we have different methods or different interpolation methods for upsizing or downsizing. So let's click OK and we now have an image that is 30 inches wide. OK, let's just go back in our history, back to our open state, back to our original size. Now have a think about what I said just before that when we upsize Photoshop has to make these pixels up. It's got to invent them. It can't just get them from anywhere. It's got to physically make them up. So it looks around at nearby pixels and then works out how to do that. <clears throat> now I'll show you a technique that I have used for a long time. I think nowadays it's not as important because Photoshop is getting better and better and it really does an amazing job at upsizing. But back in the day I used to use this technique and it sort of makes sense when, when I show you, I'm sure it'll make sense that it is a better way to upsize. So instead of doing it in one jump, what I do is I set it to come up in 10% increments. So when you think, if we, we change this, so this is 5,600 pixels and we went, went to 30 inches, it's gone to 9,000. So it's jumping from 5,000 pixels to 9,000 pixels. So it's making up 4,000 pixels. So instead of doing that in one big jump, why not do it in small increments? If it's only making up a small amount, surely that's got to be better than one great big huge jump. So what I do is I come over here to percentage and I change it to percent and I change this to 110. So that allows us to go up 10%. So it's a little bit um, it's a little bit confusing. You'd think you would type in 10%, but if I type in 10%, it'll bring it down to 10% of its size. So if we go up 10%, we want to make it 110%. If we want to go down by 10%, we would change that to 90%. Okay, so let me go 110%, and then I just click OK, and that'll bring it up roughly to about 20 inches. It was 18 inches, so 10% of that is 1.8. So that's just gone up on one little jump. So if I was going to enlarge this a lot, then I would use this method. And I've set it up as an action, and I've actually set it up to a shortcut on my keyboard. So the beautiful thing with Photoshop is that with actions we can set that to a keyboard shortcut. So mine's short to the function key F2. So I just hit F2. Okay, and every time I hit F2, that is increasing that image by 10%. So we just have a look and see what size it is now. So we just go off percent and back to inches. So that's now a 30 by 20. So I've done that in four or five small increments instead of in one large jump. And look, I haven't tested this with a new Photoshop, but certainly, you know, going back to CS5, CS6, it certainly made a much better job of upsizing images then. And it's a technique that I still use nowadays. Rightio, I want to show you this new artificial intelligence that Photoshop has. And I've had a look at this and it's pretty damn amazing. So what it is when you're upsizing, we come in here and we use this Preserve Details 2.0 as our interpolation method. Now you see when I've highlighted that, it brings up a, a noise reduction slider. We'll just take that back to zero. Now if you're clicking on here and you can't see Preserve Details 2.0, you should because it should default to on. But just in case it's not, what you need to do is you need to go to your preferences, so Command or Control K, and down the bottom here, Technology Previews, just click on that, and you need to enable enable Preserve Details 2.0 here. Okay, so just enable that. And what we're going to do is I'm going to be really ridiculous here, and I'm going to upsize this to 120 inches. And now I'll leave it on this one here for a start and I'll show you the difference. So in our preview window, let's look at these 
chains here. Okay, so this is a preview of how it's going to look at this size. So you can see that's fairly soft. So that's what we used to use. That was This was the best option for upsizing in Photoshop. Now we have Preserve Details 2.0. Okay, and you can see that that has made that quite a bit sharper. I'll just swap that over again to the other one. So you can see that's fairly soft. And now that's a lot sharper. Now sometimes it can introduce noise, so you have a noise reduction slider here. You want to be fairly lenient with this because you can see at 100%, as with any noise reduction, it really sort of smooths it out and we lose our detail. So I only ever come to around about sort of 10% just to sort of take care of any noise that's in there. Let's go OK and let's see what sort of a job it does. And remember I'm doing this in one jump where normally I would take it up in 10% increments. Rightio, let's have a look at this. So just go to our image size again. So you can see that is it's 120 inches. Our new file size is 4.8 gig. And let me just zoom in. And that is pretty amazing. As you can see, that looks pretty damn good to me. You know, I would probably put a high pass filter over this if I were to actually print it to tidy it up a bit. But there you go, that's taken that image from 18 inches to 120 inches. Absolutely amazing. Okay, well there you go guys, that is how you resize your images. I hope you found it interesting. Um, it is something that some people or a lot of people seem to have trouble with just getting their head around how it all works. Um, hopefully that's sorted that out for you. Have a bit of a play with a couple of images and see how you go. And if you're new to the channel and you've enjoyed this, please feel free to subscribe and just hit that bell. That way I can let you know each time a new video comes out. Thank you so much for watching. You guys have a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.